So naturally, I've been getting a lot of DMs and and texts about this, about David Penzer uh, wrapping up with Impact Wrestling. Of course, right when it was announced on social media, I mean, people are messaging me nonstop about this, which I totally get it because this is something I've been asking for for quite some time. And I think it's important for me to throw out there that when I have asked for change in Impact, whether it was Josh Matthews off commentary, Matt Stryker off commentary, D'Lo Brown off commentary, David Penzer off ring announcing. I have nothing personal against any of these people. I don't know any of them. I'm just a podcaster. I'm not in the industry. Same thing when Velvet Sky was on commentary in NWA. I was messaging my guy at NWA like, yo, get her off commentary. But there's, you know, it's okay if something something isn't working to make a change. And I I, under, I recognize everything that David Penzer has done in this industry. Um, you know, by by no means do I think he's like the worst ring announcer in the world. I mean, but I felt like time had passed him by a little bit, and. You know, the, the show has been really formulaic for a while. It's the same graphics. It's the same sounds. It's the same people. Just everything is the same. And, you know, my biggest knock on David Penzer doing the ring announcing, and I didn't care about the time he stumbled over his words. I stumble over my words all the time. It was just that every everything sounded the same. Whether it was terrorizing you know, you have the jobbers coming in or you have Josh Alexander in the main event. Like everyone just got the same energy, the same introduction. And it, I just felt like everything, you know, from the beginning, from the first match of the show to the end, like it just all felt the same. And it, it has to do with the look also. You know, it's not uh, it's not David Penzer's fault that the show is formulaic. But I just felt like time had passed them by, you know, uh, when they would show you know, back when they were always showing the old TNA clips, when they were just obsessed with the library forever, you know, you would hear him doing the ring announcing and he sounded much better, a lot more enthusiastic, a lot more energy. So it was just, it was one of those things. I think it just, you know, it, it passed them by and it was just time for them to go a different direction. I've been thinking they've needed the different direction here for a little while. And, and, you know, frankly, the guy that he replaced was horrendous. I don't even know what his name was. You know, he only did it for half a year or so. So when they brought David Penzer in, I was actually very excited about that because the other guy was just just horrible. Um, but no, you know, I again nothing personal. I used to listen to David Penzer's podcast. I liked it very much. I've I've many times on this show given props to when he was doing the commentary for that TNA show they did several years ago. I would prefer him. I, maybe I sound crazy. I would prefer him on commentary over Tom Hannafin, to be honest with you. Uh, because I like people who sound natural on commentary, and that's what I thought he did. I thought he sounded really good. I think he's got a good voice, you know, but it was just something about the ring announcing. I just think it's passed them by. Um, I, th I thought it was going through the motions a little bit, you know. I'm worried about who the replacement is going to be. Uh, it could be Jade Chung. I, I, I feel like it probably is, even though I don't think she's ready. I don't think she's better than David Penzer, to be honest with you. Um, she looks great. She's hot. You know, I think it's good to have a young female in that role. Um, but I don't think she's ready. The, the few times I have heard her do the work, I don't think she really stood out. I think there's a lot of work to be done still. Um, and if they want to go that direction eventually, I'm all I'm all for it. You know, I like her. Um, because because my concern, you know, when I was getting on here and begging for Josh Matthews to be removed from commentary. It wasn't because I like, you know, and it was never because I disliked Josh Matthews. I just thought he was getting really silly towards the end. And I just wanted someone a little more serious in the role. Like you could tell he was kind of checking out. So then they bring in Matt Stryker, who is someone I like a lot. And I was really excited about that. And he never sounded like really committed to the role. And then you bring in D'Lo Brown and he sounded really unnatural and fake to me. And so, like, they remove Josh Matthews. And then, like, six weeks later, I'm like, yo, bring Josh Matthews back. 
you know, like for the, you know, for the sake of change, I thought those guys sounded great for a little bit. Um, but then after a while, I was like, yo, they're, they're doing a worse job. So I don't want them to bring someone who, who who's worse than David Penzer because we know that they're going to beat the drum. They're going to, whoever they're going to bring in is going to be the ring announcer for a long time. Like they don't make quick changes usually. So, you know, who is it going to be? If it's Jade cool, if they feel like she's ready, cool. I, you know, from what I heard from her on BTI, I think there's some work to be done, but I'm, I, I could live with it. You know what I mean? But I, I do, I do strongly feel that when you're going into this TNA era, like you can't, you have to, you can only do this once. You can only, rebrand to this extent one time and a lot has to change i've as i've said i think they're going to make the changes they need to make are they going to make the changes i need to i think they need to make let me rephrase that they're going to make the changes that they think they need to make but will they make the changes i think they need to make and my what i think means nothing i'm i am a wrestling podcaster i am not in the industry but they're changes that I think are necessary. These other, there's other changes personnel wise that I think they need to make. And I'm not going to say who, but I think that there's, there's more changes they have to make. Um, but, but by making this one, it tells me that they're serious about going into 2024 with a really fresh product. You know, I think, I think Penzer's aged out of this a little bit. I think Jim Ross has aged out of what he does. I think I'm aging out of what I do, if I'm being totally honest with you. You know, if, if you want a younger audience, a younger crowd watching your show, you, you just you have to minimize the amount of like 57 year old people on screen. That just that just then like the nature of the nature of things, you know. Um. So hopefully, hopefully they do something here where it's it's um something fun, something young, something semi-recognizable and just hopefully it's an upgrade because again uh i don't want them to make a downgrade for the sake of change because then we're going to be right back where we started i hope that is a change that they think is better than what they had and you know kind of like when tom hannafin replaced matt striker like they say hey we have a better option here and he's been a lot better will they do something here where it, it's just a better option and the show feels different, you know? So it's going to be interesting. But again, as I said, I have, I have never had anything towards him. I don't know him. I don't have anything towards any of the people that I speak. Um, you know, you can call it negatively about or, or people that I want replaced or removed or whatever. I don't have anything personal, but I do care about this company very much. Contrary to popular belief. I mean, this is the one wrestling show that I, I have stuck with. You know, I've left WWE. I've left AEW. I left NWA for a while, even though I've kind of returned to it. You know, like, I'm still here. This is this is the company I care about. But I do feel strong about a lot of my opinions about the changes that need to be made if you want to compete. Like, you have to be, you're never going to have the budget of WWE, but you have to be more NXT than you are MLW. You understand what I'm saying? You have to be more AEW than you are NWA. If you really want to, you know, get out there and and, and compete and uh take it to the next level, but you have to freshen things up. It seems like that is what they're doing. And um, you know, I know he said he was not retiring. So I mean, I mean, it doesn't sound like he has a role with the company anymore, even though they could probably find a role with him for him, you know, talent relations or something, but um, you know, this was necessary and, you know, we wish him, um, we wish him well and whatever he does in the wrestling world. I know he has his own ventures on the outside, but if he does anything in the wrestling world, you know, we definitely wish him well in that, but this was a necessary change that they needed to make if they want things to be fresh and new in 2024.